Hello all, Jay here with Elegant Edits and today I will be addressing an issue with the L1800 uh, that some people have had, uh, especially in the forums and uh, when you experience, or if you've experienced rather, these lines, what these are called are actually head strikes. Uh, but there's something in particular that I like to show you, um, it, which would actually be the root cause, most likely the root cause of the head strikes. It has really nothing to do with the, the print head itself, but rather a, a little guard uh, that, that rests just below the print head. So uh, I didn't really intend on doing this video, but uh, I'm still getting my colors right on the 7890, so I'm still using the L1800. Uh, just to fulfill the orders uh, so that it doesn't take up too time with the uh, the color profiling uh, so hopefully uh, people won't start coming into the store and I won't have to uh, mute the audio and do a voiceover so we're just gonna see how this is gonna go and then uh, yeah I'll show you guys exactly what's happening and how you can easily uh, kind of offset some of this and I have another recommendation but I haven't done it yet, so I'll put it out there. Uh, but some of you guys who might have an extra printer, I'd like you to try it and just tell me how it works. Um, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you could do to troubleshoot this, because what I've happened uh, to happen, oh, actually I could have shown you this, uh, how to do this paper towel method. Um, so um, I wonder if I should just do that all in this video. Uh, but basically, um, well, I'll show you how to do it with the, the 7890. Sometimes, depending on who may have actually done the conversion, when they pull these pizza wheels out, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a slight, you can see a slight curve in that direction in this, this aluminum plate here. And I've had that actually scrape the film uh, before. And so what I would do is I'll put my thumb here and gently kind of tug on it and make sure that's aligned because if it's not it could drag and how you would notice the difference is when it's coming through the L1800 uh, you let's say the papers or the the film rather is feeding this way if you have strikes uh, or not strikes but if you have drag marks I would say that are vertical that run vertically along the actual film, it's going to be that bar that I just showed you because it's it's set too low or it's bent or buckled in a way where it's scraping the print. So I've had that happen in the past, but the reason why I know these are head strikes is because you can, I mean, you can see literally that's how the underside of the print head is gonna look uh, when we take it apart more than likely. Uh, well, at least the guard, you'll it'll probably be a bunch of black gunk on the guard uh, here and so that will be the first step and that's if you have vertical marks now um, obviously the printers turned off I'm sure you know how to actually do all of that uh, by now uh, but what I'll do is I will do the paper towel method again for this video in case you didn't see the 7890 and you'd like to see uh, how you should be cleaning the surface of your print head in order to uh, to prevent the gunk actually building up to scrape and, and cause those strikes around the film. So just to be thorough, I'll go ahead and do this again. Uh, here, I'll set the camera up and then I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so what you're gonna need for this would be uh, your paper towel, uh, syringe, preferably with a blunt tip, or you don't have to have one. I just feel like you get more control you also won't waste as much cleaning solution. We're using the uh, my second favorite cleaning solution, and that's uh, the Printhead Hospital, and the link is in the description for that, and I believe it's through Amazon. Um, so we're just, well, we can do it now. So we'll draw up a little solution here. Put that to the side. And we want to fold this paper towel just about the same um, we just want to fold this paper towel just at about the same width of the print track. 
And remember, you want to start uh, actually with smaller folds because it'll get a little bit more uh, wider as you continue to fold. And the reason we are going to fold this and apply the cleaning solution outside of the printer is that we don't generate a waste uh, ink counter error because if you put the paper towel in first and and try to uh, add the cleaning solution you may miss and hit the little pad that's underneath it. Uh, so it's probably good that I wanted to, I decided to stop and do this. So we're just going to take this. Hope you can see. Should have done it with piezo so you can actually see it saturated. But you do not want this to be dripping wet. That's enough. So as I hold this up, you shouldn't see it drip at all. Just enough to absorb. And then we'll come over. I'll have to readjust this camera. Uh, but we'll go over to the printer and I'll show you how to add this. So since I already had one in here uh, and I had it soaking to soften up the gunk that's on the bottom of the head. You can see this is just with it resting. I hadn't applied much pressure to this. So I know it's going to be pretty caked up on there. It's probably going to look like rubber actually. Okay, so before we even put this into the printer, I know, I know maybe some a little too much information, but I have to tell you guys what to avoid and what to look out for so that we don't create any errors. Uh, it's easy to show you what to do, but I'd like to show you what not to do so that you, it's just we're all in a better place uh, with the exception of the video being a little longer than intended. So what you want to avoid when you reach your hands down here at any time, make sure always make sure the printer's powered off uh, firstly and that it's you have it freely moving here. Uh, so you want to make sure that you don't get anything on this little, it looks like a thick plastic band or a thick plastic piece of tape here on top. This is the encoder strip. And then you have your, I believe your carriage belt is what they would call it. And then the carriage rod, this little metal piece that runs along here, this bar. So uh, you don't want to touch really anything over here. Now, if you happen to, you can take a, like an alcohol prep pad uh, or a foam swab, preferably just a prep pad. Uh, and you can take it and pinch your encoder strip very gently and wipe that clean with alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and then it will evaporate. So you don't have to worry about any moisture or residue. Um, and so actually all of this ink that you see in here is actually overspray from Acrorip 9 in case you're wondering. So uh, that's another story. So it's a no story for another time. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a comparison between Acrorip 9 and 10. And I can do that uh, because we've had a lot of people think that we're lying to them in the forums by telling them that, you know, it's it's faster. But again, another story for another time. Just let me know. So we are going to place this right along this track. Now, you can't leave it there. What we're going to do is press down just gently and we're going to actually slide this paper towel somewhat underneath towards this way so that it goes underneath that metal that aluminum track that I just showed you, that uh, that plate actually, that could be causing the first vertical strike marks. So what we're trying to do is to get this paper towel to clear these little rubber feed rollers. You don't want this paper towel to be above that because the print head uh, will kind of get stuck on the paper towel. So next, I don't know if you can see the far edge, but we're, we're gonna press down firmly on the right edge of this paper towel and so that's to ensure that the print head can pass over that as a start so now with the l1800 it rests a little closer to uh the the plate or the uh the actual tract so you can gently very gently lift up just a little bit and pull this over so that it doesn't drag you can stop here pick it up again and just move it over until you can see both sides of the paper towel. Now, you can do two things. You can do a shoe shine method, which is what I showed you, but I don't like to do that with the L1800 because that paper towel needs to be folded perfectly in order for this to not get stuck. So what I would say is to take one finger, preferably your index finger, and press down, not too hard, but just press down and you can kind of just 
slide the print head along. So you can do that. Be careful with the ribbon cables. Don't do what I do. Uh, so the paper towel isn't moving and you can kind of see it start to pick up some of the, the gunk that's on the bottom of that plate that I'm going to show you. Don't worry, we'll take this apart and I'll show you how to do it without actually taking the print head out. Like actually unplugging ribbon cables and all of that. That's a last resort. Uh, so I'm going to let this sit for about another 10 minutes or so because I had the other one setting. And that's just to kind of soften up that ink that's on the bottom so we're not here cleaning this thing for 40 minutes. Uh, so stick with us and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have removed this screw uh, just to be, you know, easier on myself. I can actually remove this here. Careful upon exit, and this is trash now. And I know people are really excited about, you know, seeing the 7890 up and running. And again, uh, it's just going to be a matter of actually uh, getting those colors right before I just start putting out these videos. And most of you have requested more of the, the L1800 videos. If you're wondering why I don't have a screw here, it's because I got tired of doing this. So I shaved down a fill plug. Uh, <laughs> deal from a cartridge and I just put it I press it down in there and it just makes my maintenance faster so okay so firstly we're gonna get our flat head screwdriver release this these lines this everything is really tight just so I can get the shot for you so let me get this sorted out first Okay, the camera mounts right behind me so it's a little difficult to to do everything but you guys know how to remove dampers so it's hard for me to do this without bumping into this stuff and so there's no way around it uh, you're gonna just move these dampers off to the side and we'll have to reprime them later there's, there's really no way around doing that uh, we're gonna get the reverse flow back into the tanks and actually I might do even though I don't, I'm not due for one right now, I might do a reverse waterfall again in this video. So that people can see it done, or I may, may need to do one, but I'm out of foam swab, so. Okay, so firstly, uh, what we need to do, I might as well just switch to my Phillips head screwdriver tip. And I haven't done this a while, so let me see here. I need to actually remove this. So there, man, it's hard to see with that camera set up. There's a little clip <clears throat> on the right side and you wanna pull out and up very gently. You can see that come up a little bit. Not quite all the way. There should be another one here on the right side, right where the ribbon cables are. And if I freak this, it just should pull right up and over. Set this to the side. All right, next, this is always really tricky. So you can try to use something with a very thin tip, but right here, there's a little part, a little clip that's behind here and it's very tricky to catch, but you're trying to pull forward and up. And I may have to wrestle with this a bit, but there's one on the left side and one on the right side. All right, there's the left side. And I want my videos to be honest, you know, I don't take apart. Well, see, with great maintenance and great consumables, you should not have to take your L1800 apart 
as often and do all of these things. Because if you have great inks, then the likelihood of it clogging it, uh, clogging your, your system is very uh, low. I don't know why they just didn't add an out, outer clip just like they did with the ribbon cables, but just know you'll have to fight with this thing, which you're pushing in and then forward, almost like a twist, but you're pulling. We've already gotten this side, but I'm gonna fast forward this just so we can make this video shorter. One hour later. Okay. Man, Epson said, oh, y'all can convert our printers, but we're not going to make it easy. I guess I can show you this. So what you're trying to do is to put a shim or some type of tool. It's setting like this. So we'll rotate it and pretend I'm coming from the top. And you want to push and pull up at the same time without it slipping off of this edge. And then you do the same side, same thing on either side. Uh, but yeah, that's tough for me. You may get it on the first try, but man. Okay, so next we are going to remove this from the manifold. And there will be a screw here, here, and here. I don't know how well you can see it, but on the top right corner, lower left, upper left. Uh, magnetic tool are preferred I don't like magnets around around uh, electronics that's just my thing but it should be okay and it will make it a lot easier what I like to do is just remove these until you know it's free can't see the other one the camera's blocking okay this is kind of tricky filming this for you guys man but I'm, I'm trying so uh, this may come up with just a pull of my hand. If it doesn't, uh, you either haven't fully unscrewed it like I just did, don't do what I do, uh, or you could probably get some needle nose pliers and pull up. Okay, so what I'll do is demonstrate that just in case mine pulled up, okay? Uh, but if you don't have the tool, simply grab, not over here, that's where the dampers are actually seated. You wanna grab on the side here down this with one hand and out of the way and give yourself some help if it doesn't come up on the first try be careful not to uh, tug too hard to, that you remove these ribbon cables it's a little out of focus there okay so now we want to remove the screws and you can kind of dump these in your hand I'm trying to be very careful here All right, that, two, three. Okay, so now we have this. There's no need to remove these, um, uh, the ribbon cables. Again, last resort. So now I don't have a lot of it, but this is the culprit. This little screen, very careful. This little screen here builds up ink. And if this is your first time doing this, you may find that uh, I'm sh my hands are shaking. I should have eaten breakfast. So uh, you want to make sure there's no residual ink on this. So what we'll do is we'll take these off. So there's a screw here, here, and here. And there's no wrong way to put this back on because it's, it's not symmetric. It's asymmetrical. Uh, so we'll remove these three screws uh, and take this guard off and then we'll see what we have and i also have a toothbrush and that's what we will be using to clean this gunk off of here uh, with our cleaning solution And the reason 
I'm not telling you to be afraid of removing the ribbon cables and all of that, but I have this, um, this mentality that screams, uh, why create a problem for yourself? I'm not saying you're not capable, but the moment that you start taking things apart, you become a technician without the training. So that's why we go to YouTube University. Uh, we've all done it, and I'm just doing this to ensure I don't drop one of these screws or it'll be a long day for me. Uh, so just screw them enough to get them out because, again, I'm not trying to add any more pressure on this on these uh, ribbon cables. So now be very careful with this because it is like aluminum. Yeah, so take a look at that. I can't lighten it up, but I have ink. So I don't like to wet cap my L1800 printer because you get reverse flow back into your dampers. And so you'll have to syringe the whites out sometimes if you don't put the perfect amount of cleaning solution in there. But what we're looking at here is this gunk. So I can do this without that scratching this print head. Okay. So DTF ink is so thick that it creates almost a rubber seal. I mean, it's so close to rubber that you would think it's supposed to be there. And that is actually what's rubbing against your prints. So I'm all out of foam swabs. I have some coming in today. Uh, but what I'll do is just take a Q-tip and I'll dip it in the cleaning solution and just clean around this in case there's any residual around. Uh, and then I can just set this here for now. Swing this around and you can see we'll be using these. I'll just have to really make sure we don't get any sort of um, cotton remnants of particles left over. We're gonna take our cleaning solution once more. And now what I'll do, you can do two different things. I'll just take a paper towel and you can fold it and you can dab if you want to. And what I've done is you can just kind of brush it and that'll put some of it on here. All right, we have people coming into the store, so the rest of this will kind of be a, a silent video like the 1930s. We're gonna take the screen, be very gentle not to bend this, and we're gonna clean all of this gunk off of here with this toothbrush until it all comes out and then put everything back together. You can also take something and score it a little bit to get it started because it's like a, it's almost like a rubber at this point. And then add cleaning solution as you can. See how this peels off? That's what we're, that is what's rubbing against your prints. Once we put this back together, it'll be good as new. Uh, it did okay. Uh, I mean, it was just a little bit bluish, purple. Yeah, I'm still working on, uh, I'm going to talk to someone in the forums to make a uh, profile for me, ICC profile, because he's just getting started doing this stuff, so just try to support him. And then if if I like the profile, then I'll make I'll put it out there for my subscribers too. So just to bring him some business.
Okay, so next you just want to wipe this clean, wipe any residual ink off of it. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to put this out there and maybe I'll ask in the forums, but, but I'm wondering if you could spray some sort of um, coating on this to where it doesn't obstruct the print head or, or the, uh, the path or anything. If you could take a sort of spray and seal this, um, could you make it to where it doesn't form a rubber and it just beads on it? And then when you do your paper towel method that I just showed you guys, uh, it'll wipe that residual off. And so I have a couple of different sprays, but I'm not that great of a risk taker. So uh, maybe if I can get my hands on a, a cheaper model printer and just try it and see how it works, uh, we can go that route. But if you know, or if you think of a spray that might work, recommend it to me and then we, we may be able to try it so that we don't have to do this once a month. All right, we're gonna put this back together and then uh, that'll be the end of this video. Okay, so I really wanna add this too. We're about to put it back together, so, uh, I really don't want to get ink on my ribbon cable. So uh, again, we talked about this in another video. So when you have two, three, four, ten thousand dollar investment, you know, twelve cent pair of gloves, you know, in the waist, you put on another pair and or damage your printer just to not have to put on another pair. So again, you're always having to assess these risks. And then when you're taking the stuff apart, make sure there's no static in your body. You know, when people start removing ribbon cables and stuff like that to replace their print head, they may have static electricity buildup and then it fries their board. You know, you so that's what I wanted to mention to you guys about doing something like this and you becoming an Epson technician without the training. Uh, so I don't know if you can see that dead on, but just make sure this is fairly level from the start. Once you screw it in, it should be okay, but I don't want this thing being um, skewed at all. And again, we're just going to make sure we don't scrape anything. So now when the print head makes a pass over, none of that gunk will actually scrape your film because all of this is a really tight fit. Don't want to screw it too tight. You want to screw, you know, move to the next one in succession. Don't tighten it all the way up so that you get a nice secure fit so I can tighten this one all the way up because and just hand tight you know you don't have to be you don't want to strip this part on the lower bit of this head here okay now Placing this back in, just like we got it out. Make sure not to put it, you know, on the sides or anything. And you want to make sure this is seated properly. They have these little holes. You'll see them near in the top right and left corner. Uh, and just wiggle it around. Make sure it's perfectly flat, <clears throat> because when the print head goes to make a print, here's your film. If it's like that, you're in trouble as well. So. I'm going to try my best to get these screws in here because I don't have a magnetic driver. Again, don't want to tighten it all the way up until you're on the third screw, moving around in succession. I wish I could have gotten a better angle for you, but it's very, 
very difficult to get in when everything is so tight in here. Tighten that one up. That one. Now this one. I don't have any on mine, but if you have any ink on that, now would be a good time to actually do that. Make sure that's clear. All right. Secure. Just have this clip make sure not to pinch these cables see how mine is out of I, don't know, I hope you can see that uh, this one is guided through here but this one isn't this is the importance of not having ink on your hands so you don't want to put this guard back on here and it crushes your your ribbon cables if these are bent in any way you're in trouble so again as I mentioned before uh, Epson said, hey, y'all can convert our printers. We're just going to make it tough on you. All right. Oh, that's one. Secure. Now, the next step is going to be to reprime uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The next step is going to be to reprime the stampers. But before I do that, I'll go ahead and do the reverse waterfall method. And I have it all set here. But you want, I'm only going to do the, uh, the white channels. And so if your prints are faded, you might want to do this method. If your white is not as clear or, or full or crispy as we say, you want to drop a little cleaning solution in this. And that's very dark. Uh, okay, that's very dark. You want to drop a little cleaning solution here. And with this tubing, just securely place it over what we call the inlet or where the damper actually make contact with the um, the print head basically so you can twist this you can actually leave this here for a while and let that cleaning solution work its way uh, and to kind of soften up the inks a little bit even you know 10 15 minutes there's no harm in doing this I don't like the waterfall method you have more likelihood of damaging the print head when you push solution through and also uh, with an untrained hand, you can more than likely inject cleaning solution into that uh, pad again, and you'll get the flashing red lights and you'll be in the forums wondering, you know, what happened. But uh, so that's enough for that. Now I can gently pull up until I see ink fill the syringe. That's good enough. Now, once this is all said and done, we'll still have to do about two cleanings so you can take this and dump this ink if you want and start with cleaning solution again or if you're just doing it to the white channel you're perfectly fine with just moving that right over it might be contaminating my solution but uh, the things I do for y'all so it's all good so we're gonna place this over the other inlet and you can like I said 20 minutes if you've never done this before, let it sit 10, 20 minutes. I've heard of people doing it overnight. That's a bit excessive to me. Uh, so I um, know mine aren't that bad because I do this at least every week. And I probably shouldn't, but this is going to be the best method. You know, when things go wrong, the solution isn't always, you know, put a new one in, you know, put a new print head uh, in the printer. So... 
that's good and then you can take a foam swab I'll wait until mine get here I'll kind of dab this just a little bit just to absorb some of this residual ink but I do not want to touch my inlets with these cotton swabs not the actual you know the tip of them just add a little gunk there that may be why uh, the ink you get some what we call reverse flow where your dampers not only need to be shaken when you come back to the printer but they also uh, need to be fully reprimed because of the uh, the reverse flow that you have but that's because there might be some ink gunk there and the damper can't make you know proper contact uh, when it's seated all right so now what we can do is try to remove all of these reservoir plugs or tank plugs because as we prime we'll just be dumping that same ink back into the reservoir so i'll get my colors out okay so i actually keep all of my syringes in separate uh, bags so that it doesn't contaminate my my other color of the syringes and so let me put these in order we got yellow black or key if you're wondering why black is uh is k it stands for key um, we have our white magenta and cyan so i have these for these four inch blunt tips for drawing ink out of the bottles but we won't be using those now just a regular syringe will do so we're going to start with our yellow here and shake them up and there's nothing wrong with shaking all of the colors so we had a little reverse flow in here but the key is making tilting the cartridge to where you see a bulk of the bubbles going to where the exit port is and that is how you prime but i'm doing this in an awkward way just to make sure we get the shot Do it once or twice, it doesn't matter. And we're just adding those colors back, replacing the damper back. Because these have been sitting here for roughly 30, 40 minutes now. And I don't want to put all of this stuff back together only to find out that I need to reprime the carts. That, that wouldn't make any sense. So uh, we always try to not have to double work. And actually, what would be better is if we use priming tips. And I have some over there, but I don't want to make this video too long. But you have less like less of a likelihood of actually damaging the the rubber tip of where it connects to the inlet if you have those priming priming tips for your, your nozzle so I actually didn't even have any reverse flow whites are looking pretty good I haven't done maintenance in two days but this is okay And word to the wise, always keep, okay, this one needed to be, see, I had some reverse flow in there from it hit, hanging, but word to the wise, always have another, you know, if you have an L1800 or any printer for that matter, if you don't have an extra set of carts or dampers, uh, just go ahead, go buy them right now. If you can afford it, go ahead and buy it right now. You know, no sense in waiting on finding out that your one of your dampers are bad in the middle of a job, and then now you have to order one and wait until they come in. You know, so I don't want it to be a lecture, but take it from me. You want to have all of your stuff like me. I'm preaching to you guys, and I don't have an extra L1800 print head. So guess what I'm gonna do. 
I'm gonna go and order another print head. And if you're needing a quality print head for the L1800, and they're more than likely gonna be in stock at a great price, it's gonna be Kingdom DTF. And again, uh, I am a partner if you order from anything in my link. Some of them are just free gems that I include in the links in my description of my videos. Uh, but some of them are paid links and I will outline which ones are paid just so that I'm doing my due diligence for you guys to know that if you decide to purchase some of the products and the links from those links that I'm actually... I receive a small commission from that. Again, I have some great things in store for this channel. I'm networking with people. We'll, we'll have some exclusive deals coming up here soon. Again, some of these things I don't necessarily profit from. Uh, I just ask them to give you guys a discount on their products if I agree to make a video on their products. So some of the stuff I do to earn a little extra income at this point but most of it has started with just me wanting to help the community and um, and it's kind of grown into this I've had people ask me if I sell printers and I had no intentions of doing that but if that's something you guys are interested in I'm not against it just let me know uh, I have the right people and the right companies that would help me do it, but I just don't really have a desire to But I would do it for you guys. So just let me know Let me know if you want me to talk about anything specific on the channel Because again, I'm here for you guys as this thing gets monetized Yes, I will draw an income, you know residual income from it at some point. I don't know why I can't lock this in here uh, but that's not what it's about. I see people getting taken advantage of in the forums, and I just want to make sure you guys have sound information. Oh, that means that one of these hoses aren't connected, but I'll keep that in there. Uh, I'm not perfect. So let's get this stuff rolling so that we can get back to making quality prints and making money too because there's nothing wrong with doing both so i've hoped i hope that you found this video uh, helpful in some way uh it's just a matter of running two head cleanings and using uh, either quimage ultimate or creating a what we call a purge sheet uh to where you can actually purge the the, the inks through the system and get it flowing to get more ink flowing to the head now that we've done the reverse flow suction on that okay so what we're going to do now I hope you can hear me well what we're going to do now is open up Quimage ultimate and we'll load a sheet of letter size paper here So that after our two head cleanings, we can just ensure our colors are good and ready to go before we commit to an actual print. Oh, well, <laughs> that's uh, my niece right there. She just turned two years old a few days ago. But yeah, I didn't even know that would pop up on here. But yeah, so you get to see her. And yes, those are Mickey Mouse ears. <laughs> hey. I only do it for her. Uh, so, all right, so we're going to go to this here. I need to hook up the L1800. And now what Quimage is going to do, I explained this uh, the other day, but it's going to print all of the, uh, the colors that I specify here. Now this doesn't represent the color of inks that you have in the printer, like in the actual cartridges. What this represents is the colors that it's going to show. Uh, and you can, um, so what, I can send this over now, I guess, and it'll do it as soon as it's finished here. And it's going to print a purge sheet. I choose all of the colors so that 
uh, we can see every one of those colors generated. So this is exactly what it's going to print out. Basically everything that's within gamut for the L1800. And then we'll see what we have. And I guess I can run a test print after those two. I'll just print this small there. I print it for a client here. Change our template to four by six. Apply. And I guess I can bring this down a little bit so it doesn't chop it off at the top. So far, so good. strikes that I showed you before that was <laughs> exhibit a now we have this right here. that's the final print I don't even need to run another one uh, just for the sake of time what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove this and add the uh, the 4 by 6 so that we could run a test print pretty much set up from what I remember send the shop over we fix our template I'm just gonna push down a little bit to give this sheet some help sometimes on this with the L1800 the smaller sheets uh, if you don't cut those uh, make those cuts as close to factory as possible sometimes uh, you might get a skew error or it won't actually feed the sheet so Okay, it accepted it. Moment of truth. And this is all <laughs> real time, man. I'm not, um, uh, this is the first print since we've done this. So, but uh, however it comes out, I'm going to show it to you. I'm not going to cut it out. I'm thinking about creating, and then I'll turn it back so you can see, see the print. I'm not going to cut it. Uh, but I'm thinking about creating a group just for the sole purpose. I don't like any type. Someone mentioned in the comment or in the uh, forums about me wanting to control something, and I'm here to help. Uh, so I, I, for the sole purpose of you guys being able to access me faster. So I don't know what it will be called. Uh, let's take a vote on the name for the group uh, and if you even would want to be a part of something like that because sometimes you guys have to email me and some there I know there's a ton of wealth of people that watch my videos now so it may be that I might not know the answer or I might need your help but if we have a group and um, we can kind of keep it about maintenance and also things about the channel or, or whatever if I decide to sell printers one day uh, to know that people are being sold quality equipment. Uh, all of that can be uh, kind of a start to this kind of crooked. So all of that can kind of be a start to some of that. So let me know if that is something that does interest you so that you can access me quicker than an email that I might not see or you messaging my, my business page, Elegant Edits. Sometimes people message me on there and I'm not really a social media person by nature. Uh, so let me know if that's something that you guys will want because it takes time 
and it takes effort. But here's the print. You can see, or not see, I don't know, um, that white laying down. And this isn't the premium white. This is just the white from DTF. I have a beard hair right there. I know you can see it, so I might as well address the elephant in the room. Uh, they got caught in that. Uh, so here are the colors. We don't, we still don't have a just marvelous uh, profile, ICC profile for it, uh, but the colors are close so far. I hope that's in focus. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you guys want that group to be set up. And um, um, I think there are enough DTF groups out there, to be honest with you. But if it's something that you guys want to do, I'll make an effort to do that because my goal is to get one video a week. So I don't want to really add too much to my plate. But again, I'm here. Anybody who watches my videos, if you comment, I will get to it. It's just sometimes I don't see them. But I created this channel. I'll say it until I'm dead and gone. Uh, I created this channel with the mindset of putting information out there that wasn't really common knowledge or wasn't out there before. Uh, in a way that could be uh, explained uh, in a way where hopefully everyone can understand, no matter what level of proficiency you have with printing. Uh, again, it's been great. That's how you clean it. Uh, and that's that guard. All we did was clean the guard. We didn't remove the printhead. So if that helped you, please give this video a like or share it in a forum or in a group and uh, help me get to the top. And uh, in order for me to get to the top, uh, I'm going to be holding hands with you guys. So help me get there, and I'll continue to give back to the community. And as always, stay elegant.